Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to do what I did last week and start and really continue this series that I actually have a lot of fun doing, and it's called That One Dude. Somebody that I have strong interest in this week, as of right now, today is Wednesday, it is 9.37 a.m., September 11th. Um, so what we're going to do getting into this slate is, and really this, this video specifically, I'm going to focus on one guy. And to recap, if you didn't see my video last week, that one guy for me was Keenan Allen, somebody who, for one reason or another, I like them. I'm going to try and stay away, and I usually will stay away from the absolute chalk monsters, at least for what early week ownership looks like, right? Last week, Dalvin Cook, uh, making him that one dude, or, or Christian McCaffrey making him one that dude, that's no fun. Everybody's on that player. Somebody who wasn't owned was Keenan Allen, coming in at under 10% ownership last week in a lot of contests. He was that one dude for me. Uh, we, we talked about our logic last week. You can go back to that video. I won't focus on it. He ended up with eight catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown, and I believe 10 targets. He excelled in the slot with no Tyrell Williams in the matchup against Indianapolis, as we said, funneling to the defense. Uh, defensive. Um, their defensive premise was to funnel to slot receivers, tight ends, and running backs. That's exactly what happened in that game for the most part. So that one dude for week two, you ask. Um, well, I'm going to keep this going, and I'm always going to reflect on the week before, even if Keenan Allen would have caught two balls for 40 yards. It's just something that in hindsight I think made sense. We ended up getting there with it. Now it's somebody that I have strong interest in for tournaments and or cash lineups. Allen was fine for both. Unfortunately, due to his price, I did not get him into my cash lineup. Cash lineup has been posted on Twitter from last week after it locked, obviously not selling or giving out my actual plays or lineups. Um, lineup overall did fine for 50-50s and head-to-head. -head. Small loss on the 1 o'clock games. Uh, ended up winning money back at the 4 o'clock turbo slate, five-game slate, actually. So, with that said, my one, that one, dude, for week two. Drum roll, please. That was terrible. That was better. Cooper Cup. Los Angeles Rams slot wide receiver, the favorite target of Jared Goff before he got hurt last year in terms of overall production in that offense. Now look, there's a lot of good wide receivers in that offense. Brandon Cooks on the outside, an absolute burner. Robert Woods, who led the team in targets last week and was probably the most, again, Cup was injured last year, but the most frequently to hit value last year, the most stable, the most consistent, you can say, wide receiver in that offense. But Cooper Cup in the slot, my God, this guy looked 100%. There was concerns about the injury, right? He got injured last year. He came back, then he gets re-injured. Um, there were concerns about it. During the offseason, there was only positive things coming out about Cooper Cup. He was somebody in this Rams offense and tournaments last week that I had a big piece of. Really, all the pieces of it did fine. It was just a matter of not sustaining drives, and a big part of that was Jared Goff. Jared Goff last week, his ex-completion percentage, the expected completion percentage, was actually 10% higher than what his completion percentage ended up being. Now, if you don't know what that means, your expected completion percentage is what's expected to happen. What actually happens, if, if it's lower than that, it means that you just had a game that was not expected, meaning that you played poorly. That's pretty clear, but it also means that he's going to regress. Last week was clearly a bad game, and in neutral environments, he should have had 10% higher. So overall, a bad game, things didn't break his way, drops, whatever the case might have been. Cooper Cup saw 10 targets in that game in the slot. He saw eight of them. He caught seven of 10 targets. Now, the big thing is he's going to be in the slot, a spot where we targeted Keenan Allen last week, a spot where I target a lot of my wide receivers because there's just overall upside. Chris Godwin, D.D. Westbrook, those guys were in my cash lineup last week. They were both slot players. They both ended up getting in the end zone. You're going to have more upside just to use the entire field and to get in the end zone. Now, Cooper Cup last year, yards after contact versus expected yards after contact. He was one of the best in the league. Again, expected is what you're supposed to be getting. He had right around it. Now, a lot of guys will exceed that, but on the over the course of a year, usually you'll get what you're expected or you'll be performing below it, meaning that you're, you're due for regression. Cooper Cup was performing up to standards all of last year, one of the best receivers in yards after contact. Uh, he was another one of the best receivers, top 10 in the league last year in separation. Um, separation just meaning how far he's getting away in terms of yardage for his defenders per route. 3.5 separation score uh, in terms of yardage. That's fantastic. Cooper Cup and Robert Woods last week in week one, both of them were top 10 in separation at the wide receiver position. Cup coming in at number nine before the Monday night games kicked off, so it could have dropped to 10. Uh, but coming in at number nine before those Monday night games kicked off, Robert Woods coming in in the top six. So Cooper Cup, a guy who was on 90% of the field, was on the snap on the field for 90% of the snaps for this game. He had 10 targets, eight of which came in the slot, caught seven balls for 10 yards. And really, if you watch the game and you just look at his yards after contact statistics, for the most part, they were not coming in all that great. He was catching the ball. He was going right down. 
So even though he had separation, what that tells me is that a lot of these balls were not thrown to where they could benefit a wide receiver like Cup. Again, going back to Jared Goff having a bad game. When a guy is getting separation and he's having no yards after contact on seven catches for 10 targets, some of that's because they're just short. Um, He's just sitting down making the catch and falling to the ground. But a lot of the times, especially when there's 10 targets and he's top 10 on the weekend separation, a lot of the times the balls are either thrown behind him or they're not leading him enough um, to actually get more contact. So he's a guy who in the slot is always there, always touchdown upside in this offense. The offense performed poorly week one. And as I'm looking right now on the four different sites that I've referenced so far this week for ownership projections, Cooper Cup is coming in sub 10% owned. So is Robert Woods. This Rams offense, even though it is in the highest total, which is something we have not yet touched on, the highest total, the best game environment on the slate, potentially the fastest paced game on the slate with the highest total of like 54, 54 and a half, wherever you look as of right now on Wednesday, Cooper Cup is not being owned in tournaments. Cooper Cup is a fantastic cash play. I expect there to be, based on the game environment here, at least eight targets. And since he's in the slot, being Jared Goff's most comfortable target last year and seemingly the same this year, um, for 10 double digit targets first week back 90% of the snaps. I believe that Cooper cup becomes a fantastic play this week. And then you get into the matchup. He probably draws PJ Williams gave up a touchdown last week to Kenny stills in the slot. Now, Kenny stills just joining the Texans had three catches. I believe it was 37 yards and a touchdown caught all three of his targets. Kenny stills by far was what the fourth read in that offense. Obviously Deandre Hopkins had like 43% of the target share. Will Fuller saw targets, Duke Johnson saw targets. And then it was Kenny stills. That's not going to be the case with Cooper Cup in this Rams offense. Cooper Cup on most progressions is going to be, if not the first look, the second look. We saw Robert Woods have 13 targets last week, but Cooper Cup in the slot will have a much better matchup. Woods or Cook's potentially going to draw Lattimore, and then Woods uh, or then um, Cup in the slot will draw PJ Williams, which is a very, very good matchup to say the least for his skill set. So that one dude this week, factoring in the Vegas total being the highest in the slate, a fast paced environment. Uh, peep, the fact that people are down on this Rams offense, at least ownership wise, because Jared Goff was bad last week. That might be the worst game Jared Goff has all year in terms of expected completion percentage versus actual being 10% less than what it was. Uh, the next closest was Jameis Winston, who was only 6% less. So big gap there um, from the worst to the second worst in terms of Jared Goff having a really bad week. Everything lined up for Cooper Cup, seven catches, 10 targets. There's always touchdown equity in this offense, especially in a high total game. The matchup looks good. He was on 90% of the snaps. He seems healthy. He seems fine. And I expect a lot more yards after contact for one of the best receivers in that department last year um, moving forward. So Cooper Cup is that one dude for week two for me in the NFL season. Again, ownership is not high right now. It might come up. It might garner some more ownership. We'll see as the week goes on. But right now, Cooper Cup's that one dude. We'll recap how Cooper Cup does next week, and we'll get into that one dude from the week before. It's not always going to be wide receivers, just sometimes it's wide receivers. For this week, it ended up being a wide receiver. So I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. These are quick hitting videos. Just want to share that one dude. I like this segment that we have going. If below, you would be so kind to hit the subscribe button and comment down below. Who do you think is that one dude this week for you? Is it Cooper Cup? Is it somebody else? And then if you want to, Say in a sentence or two why that person is that one dude to you. I appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at DFS. I have exclusive uh, content on Patreon, podcasts over there, stat sheets, exclusive live streams. All that is happening all week long. You can see everything that is offered in the link down below. Again, you can hit the subscribe button where by the time you see this, probably going to hit 8,000 subscribers. We're about 10 away. Thank you all so much. We got 1,000 subscribers in like five days more. This channel is growing. It is now my full-time job and I love it. So I appreciate you all so much. My name is Sal. You already know that. Peace out, gang. Hey, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. One second. Check out this page. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, all right? And if you're interested in Patreon, if you're not already a patron, you can hit that button on Patreon, become a patron. It will take you right there. You can also check me out on Twitter, at Salvetri DFS. And hey, if you're interested, this next video that's about to pop up, why don't you check it out as well? See ya.